everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really lovely. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I made this during my Facebook Live craft along. And this is a, I guess, basically an update of the inner tunnel card that I shared about a year ago. So as you can see from the front here, it looks like a box of Krispy Kreme donuts. And then when you open up the lid, it becomes a 3D style. So it looks like a box of donuts. And it's just lots of fun to make. You can see all of the detail. I went along um, through the live and heat embossed all of these donuts with different kind of toppings. You can see the chocolate kind of icing swirls and you've got the, like all the sprinkles there. And then I've colored them all using my Arteza Everblend alcohol markers just to get some nice kind of highlight there. So it looks like that icing is just really yummy and delicious and real looking. So it's really, really fun to make. It folds down into a five by seven size. And then on the back here, I just need to add a white panel for me to write my message. This is actually being sent to my Nan as I won't be able to see her for her birthday this year. And as someone who adores donuts, I think this is the perfect card for her. The inspiration also has come from this card, which I shared in the video that I put up last year. And this is one from the 1950s. And you can see that very similar shape there when you open it and this has you know a couple more layers which I show you more this style in the inner tunnel card and I will link that up here because if you do want to do something like that and it's like um it's an underwater theme like a fish tank and it's got acetate sheets in the middle so you can see there just the difference with this one is we've not kind of cut out this panel we've just kept that one because I wanted it to look like a box of donuts so let me show you how to make this really fun card so the stamps that I've used is this one here and it's from For the Love of Stamps and it's called Delicious Donuts. Now during the live it was in stock but since I've um, shared that link from the live it's now sold out but I will look for other links and they will be shared below this video and hopefully they may bring some more back into stocks again but it's a lovely stamp set. You've got one, two, three, four different toppings which will sit on this large donut here. You also have another donut there. You've got that sign, happy birthday with sprinkles on top. And then it also says here, you do you do not know how much I love you. And you have love there in the shape of donuts as well. So it's a lovely set. So I have gone ahead and done all of this. I've got lots and lots of videos on my channel showing how I do different coloring, including using the Arteza Everblends and all the, you know, the heat embossing. And I'll link the actual Facebook Live craft along. So you can watch that if you want to as you're making this card. And I will show you all of this heat embossing in that video. But you can see there, if I just bring up that one where it can, can you see the glitter sprinkles? Really lovely. And again, you've got that yellow embossing powder there to create that icing. Just trying to get it to catch the light. You can just about make it out. There we go. And then also you have that one there, which is more swells. All of that lovely heat emboss finish. You can see the highlight there as well with the colouring. And you also have that effect as well, which I've done with the wow. That was the... Um, glitter sprinkles there as well or glitter embossing powder sorry so they are done I also did find a very small die because when you stamp it it doesn't it stamps just that kind of the inner ring but it doesn't you know these are all cut I fussy cut these myself so in the Bright Rosa paper discovery kit they have this very small circle die and it fits perfectly in the center of these donuts. So if you do have the stamp set and you do have that kit, because I know lots of you that follow do subscribe to the Paper Craft Society, then that's a really good one for cutting out the centres there of your donuts. And I've also gone ahead and done this and I do show you how to stamp with the two different colours and you just mask off the area of the stamp, stamp it in red, then remove that section and then mask off the happy birthday and stamp the rest in green. So again, watch the live if you want to see all those details. So to make the card you want two pieces of cardstock and this first piece is ten and a quarter by seven inches along the ten and a quarter side you want to score at five inches nine inches and ten inches okay so that's that piece and then this here you will need is five by seven and along the five inch side you just want to score at four now we may end up taking a little slither off of the side of this but we can do that once we get to that part so that's all you need 
Okay, so first of all, we need to create this aperture, this window. Now you don't have to, you know, you may want to just have your card as a different theme. You might have not have donuts and things like that. Because I also did say that this would work well as like a specimen style box. So you can maybe have some butterflies laid down here or maybe some bugs and, you know, different insects and things. And I've done a gift box like that on the channel as well. So there are other ideas, but you may not even want to put the window, you know, the acetate sheet or anything in here. Yours may be completely plain. But if you do want to add that, then I'm using here these are the card making magic rectangle dies and let me just remember which ones I think it was this one here for the yeah so this one here measures let me just grab my ruler so you're looking at five and a half by it's about three and one eighth of an inch and you want to make sure that you're die cutting it in the right section so you'll have your quarter inch tab I mean you don't really want to fold and burnish it yet because we're going to run this through the die machine but you will need a larger die machine to do this because obviously the, le the width here is seven inches but you can also cut this using your metal ruler and a cutting knife so there are other options there but make sure that where you have your quarter inch tab and that one inch and then you've got that section you're working on this larger section towards this end here so it's the the five by seven section, that's where we're cutting in. So with it in this orientation, you also wanna bring this down so it's over an inch away from this score line here. Okay, so you can just make out the score line there. And that's what we're creating here. So we're doing this section. So you need this to come down because where you stick this one inside, you don't want to stick it into your frame area. So you need to make sure that you bring this down over one in, over one inch down, but make sure you have an you know as even frame border on these three sides as you can get. So I'm just going to bring in my washi tape just to hold that in place. So I think there will be just fine. So I'm just going to run that through my machine. Okay, so now that's done. I'll keep that piece because it's handy scrap. And then what we're going to be doing later, we can do that you know further through the video. You don't have to do it straight away. But you want to get the next size up and you will die cut both of them together, make sure you've got a nice even kind of frame to create these frames here. So you see I've got a green one there and I've got a green one inside there. So it's just for some detail, but it will cover up the acetate, okay? And just kind of conceals, keeps everything nice and neat. So I'll pop that to one side and we can go to that in a minute. So next you will need some acetate. So you want your acetate to cover this section here but I also made sure that mine wasn't any bigger than when I added that frame onto it so you'll see nothing comes over the top here otherwise you'll need to add a larger maybe kind of mat or something to just disguise the acetate so I am using this thin tape here and you can see I'm just bringing it in so I flipped it over that's the front so just flip it over work on the back and I'm just going to bring mine down to about there. So just be careful when you add your tape, because in the live I did say that you might want to go a little bit bigger with your acetate, so it depends on the tape that you're using. I'll use that pencil there. So, but I do like that it's all concealed within that frame. So I'm cutting mine, but if you haven't got thin tape, then you will want to do it bigger than this, okay? But I'm cutting mine to five and three quarters by just over three and a half inches okay and what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to run my thin tape around this here so I'm hugging it right to the inside frame there rather than sticking it to the acetate because at least I know where my tape you know will kind of sit and that it will you know not kind of ooze out into the frame itself so you just want to make sure you come down you know, the same width as the tape when you hit your corners there. So again, don't come up too high. Make sure you only come up again the width of your tape. Like so. This way, when I cut my frames, my frames will cover all of this and there won't be any of the tape sticking out of the edges. So again, you're working on the inside. And I can grab my acetate and just very carefully lay that down, like so. And then I know my frame will go over that perfectly, like I said, to cover up that tape. But none of that sticky tape is coming through. I can give my acetate a wipe in a moment, but now we have 
we have our window for the box. So next you can fold and burnish the score lines, so just those ones and then that small quarter of an inch one there. And just make sure you burnish those well. And then also that piece there as well. Okay, and what's going to happen, so this is the front of the card, the way it opens, this piece is going to stick against here, okay, and then you're going to add glue to this and it's going to stick to the top of that and you'll see how everything will then square off, but it all folds flat still into that 5 by 7 shape. So it's easiest to add, I'm going to stick with this tape here and just add it because it fits perfectly into this quarter of an inch tab, but I'm going to stick this end first because you can see if it's all going to fold flat and if it's catching ever so slightly you're still able to just trim a little bit off in the trimmer because we can just pop through one end so make sure that's nice and uh, secure and you've got no air bubbles in it or anything and again you're sticking that plain side not this folded side here um, maybe easier if you open it up this way and just make sure that everything stays nice and lined up. You know, use your grid on your mat if that will help. Like so. And now you want to bring that up and pretend you've stuck it there. And then bring the whole thing down flat. Now can you see mine's got a little bit of a kind of lump there. So I need to just take that sliver off of that bit there. And it will just help close everything off. And don't worry if you take a little bit more than you should because you're not really going to see it but I'm going to take, you can see there, just a, a little bit off. And it's a good way to, you know, kind of make sure it's all going to fold flat before, you know, you added your glue. But now, look, that folds completely flat. Perfect. So all you need to do now is grab your glue. I'm going to use this one now and just cover this section here. And just fold that right over and then this piece can come down and you don't want to be able to see that within this section here okay and now that will open up so you have this kind of tray effect here there's this like raised level now i've got these two pieces here which are three and three quarters by six and three quarters so i've got one that's going to go in there and one that's going to go on the back there so i'm going to get those stuck down Next I want to do my green frames, so again going back to those two rectangle dies, just lay it on your cardstock and I'm just moving that so I've got a nice, you should have a, you know, make sure all of these little gaps in between the two are the same, that way you know that your frame is going to be the same on all four sides, so I'm just adding that there, I'm just going to die cut this twice. So I'll have two frames and then I'm also going to cut a strip here which is six and three quarters by three quarters of an inch just to go along there and you'll see where I've put it on that one. It's just, you don't have to add it but it, I think it just kind of fills that blank space that you've got there. Okay, so that's everything stuck down. I've done both frames there and you'll see it's completely covered that acetate now so you get a really nice finish. So now it's just the fun part of doing that decoration. So I'm going to bring in my donuts here. I've already put some foam pads on the back. You don't have to do that but I do like that it just gives it a little bit more dimension. So I'm just going to play the play around with these and um, lay them down. So I think I'm going to go for that arrangement there. So I'm going to start with the top middle one and work your way out. That way you know that you're going to keep everything lined up. So if you get this one centered it's just a bit easier that way. And then lastly, that lovely sign. And I done it so that it was just in the centre but sitting over the green frame there. So I'm just sitting it above that chocolate donut. Just about there. There you have it. It really does make me want a donut. <laughs> so there you have it, my pop-up donut box cards and I think they look so much fun. They, they're just a joy to make. I thoroughly enjoyed the live. Lots of you have already been sharing your versions. Like I said, you don't have to have this stamp set. You can do like maybe some biscuits. You could do like a selection box. You might have lots of different sweets. You can go down the route of doing more like the critters and the butterflies and maybe moths and things like that. So there's lots of ways to, to change this, you know, to suit the things that you will have. But I think they look brilliant. This one I cannot wait to give to my nan. And I 
think this one I'm going to keep for myself. I like to just hang cards that I really enjoy and just keep it for a while. And yeah, maybe this one will never get given away because I love it too much. So thank you for watching. All the links, as always, will be shared in the video description below this video. And I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.